1.3 discusses equations and graphs of polynomial functions. Let's get into a quick warm up. So here we have a quadratic. I can tell it's a quadratic because um, there's an x times an x which makes an x squared and a quadratic is going to look like a parabola like this. Since it's in factored form already, I can kind of see where the zeros are or the x-intercepts. Now the x-intercepts are not positive 1 and negative 5, it's negative 1 and positive 5. So it's always the opposites of what's inside each of these brackets. Okay, now just quickly this one, um, this 2 right here means that there's actually two brackets that say x minus 4. And that means that there is the same x-intercept, just one x-intercept, and that's at positive 4. This is called a family of functions because notice that they all have the same x-intercepts. Here are three um, of positive five x-intercepts and then here are three negative one x-intercepts. Okay, They're all quadratic because since they're in factored form I can kind of see that they only have two factors uh, which means a degree two. And then um, they are different though in terms of their leading coefficients. So this one might look more like this with a positive one leading coefficient. This one is vertically stretched by a factor of four, so it's gonna be very sharp like that. And then this one is flipped vertically and then also um, is a little bit flatter because of the vertical compression. So it might look kind of flat like that. All right, now if all of them are in standard form, notice that the polynomials are just uh, shorter or longer. So they all kind of look the same. And we can't really tell what the x-intercepts or zeros are here, but in standard form, recall that this number, the constant number at the back, that guy is going to be your y-intercept. Now if it is in factored form, um, the quadratic should have two factors, the cubic should have three, quartic should have four, and so on. These guys are going to tell you about your x-intercepts. So remember, it's not negative b, that's your x-intercept, it's actually going to be positive b. And just you're going to flip the symbols inside, and those are the numbers that are going to be your zeros. So just for a little bit of a note, um, sometimes you'll see that even though you have two brackets and it looks like a quadratic, it's actually a cubic because um, there's this exponent right here, which means that there are two brackets that say x minus 3 and one bracket that says x plus 1. So it's like there's two x's here and a third one here, which means it's going to be a cubic function. Okay, now here's something that I always notice um, students do on a test and it's just, um, I always take off marks for it, and that's because if you just say that, let's say this is your function, and you just say, okay, x equals 2, negative 4, and positive 3 for your zeros, and you don't include the zero right here, it's not completely correct. Um, you want to make sure that when you're discussing x-intercepts, your y value should be zero. So you should put this here before you actually go into this step, which is listing your x-intercepts. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about um, these exponents right here on each of your brackets. These are called orders. So this bracket has an order 2 and this bracket has an invisible order 1. Here you have two x-intercepts, but they're both the same at negative 4. Here you have one x-intercept, which is positive 3, and that's right here on the graph. Now, do you see a difference between if you have an even exponent and an odd exponent on each of the brackets. Like, do you notice anything? If you have an odd exponent or an odd order, notice that your graph actually cuts through the x-axis right here. So it crosses over the x-axis. And right here, it also crosses the x-axis. Versus if you actually have um, an even degree, so here and here, it'll approach the x-axis and it'll touch but then it'll go back down, so it doesn't actually cross. So again, it approaches, does not cross, and then goes back down again. The number of the exponent does matter. It tells you a little bit about the shape of the graph. So if you have a larger exponent here, notice that it's a lot flatter, versus if you have a smaller exponent, it's actually a lot sharper. So again, these little tiny tidbits um, tell you a little bit about how to create a very visual picture of your graph. OK, 
Okay, so here is everything wrapped up. First of all, we have one, two, three um, x-intercepts, one at negative two, one at positive one, and one at positive six. Um, that doesn't mean that it's a cubic because notice that there is one x-intercept here because it's an order one. There's two x-intercepts here, which means it's an order two, and there are three x-intercepts here, which is an order three. That means one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is an order or a degree six polynomial. It should point upwards, so both of the ends should extend from quadrant two to quadrant one because the leading coefficient is a positive one that's invisible. We also should see that um, since this one is an odd order um, x-intercept and this is also an odd ordered x-intercept, it actually crosses the x-axis right here and it crosses right here as well. But because this one is an even numbered exponent, it does not cross. It touches and then it goes back in the same direction. Okay, so here are all the different things that you can use in order to um, make a very accurate picture of what your polynomial function looks like. Okay, so the degree should tell you um, whether or not uh, your arrows are going in the same direction or in opposite directions and should tell you a general idea of what the shape of your graph should look like. The leading coefficient will tell you if you are, um, I guess, pointing a certain way or your end behavior is pointing an opposite way. So a leading coefficient being negative could be po pointing in the opposite direction of what you originally might think. Okay, so that discusses the end behavior as well, like which quadrants are you starting in and what quadrants are you ending in. If your polynomial is factored already, you should be able to see your x-intercepts very clearly. And if it's not in factored form, you might be able to see your y-intercept very clearly. So having these points as well on your graph, again, might help in helping you visualize what your polynomial function looks like. Okay, so let's get into some examples. Here's one example right here. Um, they've already given us the graph on the side and we wanna know what is the least possible degree. Now, this is not a quadratic because it has this little hump um, in the middle, uh, but it could be a degree four, so an x uh, to the power of four graph. However, it could also be an x to the power of six graph. They might've just doubled up on one of the um, x-intercepts. It could be x to the power of eight and so on. But since they said, we want the least possible degree, then it should be an x to the power of four graph. I know that it's a negative leading coefficient because normally um, even degrees should point upwards like this, um, but this one's pointing downwards. The x-intercepts are right here, here, and here. So negative four, I'm gonna write positive four. Negative one means positive one, and then a positive three means a negative three in the brackets. Um, each of the orders though, this is an odd order because it crosses the x-intercept, or sorry, the x-axis, and it also crosses here as well. So these guys should be odd orders, but this one in the middle should be an even order because it doesn't cross the x-axis. And notice that one, two, three, four, so we have a degree four polynomial. Okay, now if we're talking about um, the function being positive or negative, that's basically just asking you where does the function have positive y values and where does it have negative y values? So everything here are positive y values versus the two blues are gonna be negative y values. And we can use um, either interval notation or we can use um, inequality notation in order to describe uh, those regions. Okay, so let's just say in terms of positive, that does not include negative four because there is no y value that's positive there. The y value is zero. The y value is also zero here. So we're gonna say it's positive from negative four to negative one, but not including negative four and negative one. So same with this region, you're not gonna include three or negative one. So it's gonna look like that. Okay, no lines underneath because it doesn't include those numbers. So the negative regions are going to be negative infinity all the way to negative four, but not including negative four, and from three to positive infinity, not including three. 
So here's another example really quick. How can we create an equation given that we know what the zeros are already? So the zeros, I'm just going to put it into factored form. Remember to put the opposites. Now this one, this one's just a little bit weird. You're going to take the positive 2 and change it to a negative, and then the 5 just goes in front of the x. Now, if they give you an extra little piece of information, you can use that to find the leading coefficient because we can't assume that it's actually 1. So take the y-intercept of 6. All of your x's should be 0, and your y should be 6. So zeros for your x's, and then we're going to solve each of those brackets. 6 is going to be your y. So 2 times negative 3 times negative 2 is going to give you 12 and you bring it over through a division. So your leading coefficient is a positive one half. And that means that this is your overall equation. Okay, so two more examples. Um, write an equation for the function below. This looks like it's probably gonna be a um, power four. That means that we have two x-intercepts here and here, and I've written them down in their brackets. And I've just said that each of them is a 2 and a 2, which makes 4. Now you're going to ask, well, why didn't I do a 1 and a 3? And I would say, well, you didn't cross over the x-axis. So I know that these guys are even orders, so 2 and 2. Now to find your leading coefficient, I'm not going to do it here for time's sake, um, but to do that, they've given you this extra piece of information. So just take the 2 for your x's and put 2 and 2 in here, put the 4 into your y and solve for your a, and that's going to give you your leading coefficient. So you can do that with any random point on the graph. The domain is going to be all real numbers because this is going to keep opening up forever and get wider and wider. Your range, it looks like, only goes from 0 all the way upwards, so anything bigger than 0, including 0. And lastly, if they ask you to sketch something like this, you can already tell a couple of things. First of all, this has all your x-intercepts here. So we've labeled that negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. I know that according to the orders, it's going to cross at these two x-intercepts because they have odd orders, but it's going to only approach at um, this x-intercept because it's an even order. So there we go. It's going to cross and cross but it's only going to approach and then go back down. Now that tells me that it's also a 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, which means it's um, a degree 4 polynomial. It should extend from quadrant 2 to 1, but because of this negative leading coefficient, it extends from 3 to 4. Now that only tells you so much about the graph. It actually doesn't tell you how tall the peaks are. So to get a better understanding of where the peaks might be, you can always average out the two x-intercepts. So add the two numbers together and split it in half. That would be the middle point and take your negative one half, sub it into your x's and solve for your y. So I think if I did that, I got about positive 28. So that means that it's gonna have a height of positive 28. I also took the average here and I got um, 2. So if I took 2 and put it into my x's, I get um, a value of negative 4. So it should be a height of negative 4. Now just really quickly, that does not mean that these are the mid, uh, well, the midpoints. That doesn't mean that the midpoints are the actual peaks. I mean, the peak could be a little bit to the left like this, or it could be a little bit to the right. Like it doesn't have to be symmetrical. The only way to get um, an accurate visualization of this graph is to either graph it with a graphing calculator or some other graphing technology, or to use calculus, which we're not going to go into in this video. Okay, so that's the end of the video. I know it was a little bit long. There was a lot of stuff to go over, um, but I hope that this will help you figure out um, or get a better idea of what a polynomial function may or may not look like.